Hi, in this video I'll be going over the um, rigging system in uh, Creation Platform and I'll be starting off by uh, oops, importing an FBX file, um, this lim FBX file. Uh, this file just defines a very simple character. I'm disabling the loading of animation data and here we've got the VAT mesh in our scene now. now before we start working with it I'll just um, modify a few values, one of them being the material uh, has got a very loud ambient color and uh, I'm just going to connect the uh, gizmo instance node to the gizmo manipulator to make sure that our manipulation system works. So um, now we're ready to start rigging up this character. Uh, this is a very simple linear hierarchy and this has got a, a geometry that's been enveloped to it. So we're looking at a skin mesh in a character skeleton. Um, but there's nothing on this character defining how it behaves. There's no solver supplied so there's not there's nothing to control the transforms of the hierarchy. They, these transforms will never move, they're basically static. Even basic uh, hierarchical uh, transform animation doesn't uh, come built in. We have to apply a solver. So that's the first solver I'm going to apply, the FK hierarchy solver. I've just dragged and dropped it on this character and now the solver is applied. Um, but even at this point, there's still um, we haven't specified which bones in the hierarchy should be FK um, hierarchy bones. So I'm just going to expand out um, this list of bones here and just pick a collection of bones that I think should be controlled in FK. The root bone, sorry I'm just going to look at this, this is the, the list of the bones in the skeleton. This is actually a tree structure but in this case it's just a um, simple linear hierarchy so it just looks like a, a list. Um, and I've picked uh, five bones here. I'm just going to pick one more. And now we've got all the bones in this character now controlled using FK. So I'm just going to expand out the gizmos a bit. What you can see is the the uh, the, giz the solver defines how um, the bones should be transformed. I.e., in this case, notice the um, the uh, FK hierarchical transformations. It's accumulating transforms from parent to child, and um, it's also exposing user interface. And in this case, the solver is just exposing. A, uh, a gizmo for every for every joint in the chain and so it's a lot of gizmos but that's actually just a configuration on the solver we can you can build solvers which just display gizmos for selected bones for example but in this case we haven't done that um, but what's interesting about this is I can remove that solver and now we've got nothing controlling the bones again the, the character is back to its empty state I'm going to apply another FK hierarchy solver but this in this case I'm just going to pick one bone so we've got the root bone there being controlled um, by the FK hierarchy solver, and now when I move it, just that bone is being moved, and there's nothing else. There's nothing inheriting off it. Um, the next uh, solver I'll apply is um, the Verlay strand solver. Now this gives um, secondary dynamics to the character. And what we're doing here is we're kind of layering solvers one on top of each other. So you can see now we've got the FK hierarchy solvers applied first, with its gizmo still being displayed, and we've got the strand solvers being applied second. Now one one thing to think about is um, solvers in creation platform are kind of like deformers in um, geometry systems where you can basically take a piece of geometry and apply a deformer to it and the deformer transforms the positions of the vertices um, but you can use a deformer on many kinds of geometry like you don't have to um, think about the topology of a ge geometry when you apply a deformer you just apply the deformer and it, it works and that's the way the solvers work here too so I'm just going to expand out this um, specify the five bones um, Uh, and now I'm going to just pick the bones that I want to be controlled by the secondary dynamic solver. And I'll pick all of them except for the first one, which is already being controlled by the, the FK hierarchy solver. Now, um, now I've got the solver applied now. I'm just going to give it a um, give it some better default values here. Um, so now we've got a simple FK hierarchy solver. So if I just press play, actually I don't need to press play, I can just manipulate this thing. We got a secondary dynamic solver here. Um, I can press play, and we can see we can see this motion is very fluid. So now what we've got is an FK hierarchy controlling the root, and a simulation controller controlling um, the rest. And it's very easy to apply the solver, and now the, the behavior of this hierarchy is completely different to before, where it was just a simple FK hierarchy, um, and 
we didn't have to know anything about secondary dynamics. All we have to do is specify the binding. There's a few other parameters in here that, that help us set it up, but it's a very simple system to set up. We can change some of the, the spring values and damping, dampening values. Um, now, if I wanted to change the behavior again, I could just select this um, character rig. Uh, come back here, and I'm just going to remove this um, Verlay strand solver. So we're no longer being controlled. And if I just go back and try to move the root, notice that nothing's working again. And nothing's, these bones are not being moved because there's no solvers now driving these bones. And instead, I can actually apply a different solver. So this time I'm going to come down, and there's a solver called um, Humanoid leg solver. And now this is nothing. This is not a skeletal hierarchy that looks like a humanoid leg, but this solver will give us some interesting behavior anyway. So as you can see, we've expanded this out. We can see a few parameters for the humanoid leg, uh, and we've got this list of bindings here. So at the moment, there's no bindings to find, so I have to press on the plus sign to expand out one set of bindings. And a binding in this case comes with a collection of bones and an ankle bone. So I'm just going to say we're going to have a few bones controlled by the IK solver, and then I'm going to leave the last one to be controlled uh, as an ankle. So now I just have to pick the bones which are going to be part of the, the leg IK chain. Okay, so these are all the bones controlled in IK. Okay, and we're going to have one ankle bone, which is just the root of the chain, bone number six. Now we, we've got a slightly different behavior here now. Um, and uh, what's interesting is I can now control the root of the chain but instead of having secondary dynamics, we now have um, inverse kinematics, okay? And you could see that this could be a, a creature's leg of some kind. Um, uh, just select this. I've got a few parameters here I could say, okay, I want the gizmo for the foot to be a little bit bigger. So we'll make that nice and big. It means I can now move, move his leg around as well. Um, and uh, there's a few other parameters, like such as pivots and things. Um, and we can go back and reconfigure these bindings, and we can even do things like, okay, we want this leg to be behave in FK, which basically gives us uh, simple FK controls like we had with the FK hierarchy chain. Okay, um, we could have actually we can do things like layering of solvers, but in this case, we're just gonna um, we've just got the built-in FK chain as part of the solver. I can blend back to IK. Now this is an interesting chain because. Um, uh, it uses the FK chain to control the shape of the chain. So if I want to have a, a chain that looks kind of um, different, I can actually animate an FK and then um, put it back in IK. And the chain tries to maintain that FK shape while also solving for IK. So you can see the shape of this, the FK chain here is, it really is affecting the, the sol solver result, um, which makes it possible to define very kind of interesting IK chains very easily. So that's it um, for the basic introduction to solvers. Solvers uh, kind of like deformers on geometry systems. They define behaviors for bones and you can add and remove them and they're sort of non-destructive. Um, this makes it very easy and quick to rig up a character, um, which is what I'm going to do next in the next uh, second half of this video. Yeah, so continuing in this video, I'm going to be going over how to set up a slightly more complex character. In this case, we've got a humanoid skeleton uh, with a skin mesh uh, bound to it. And we'll be setting up a few of these solvers. So I'm going to start off by setting up the hip solver. The hip solver is a very simple solver, which is designed to be controlling sort of the pelvis of a character or the hip. Uh, it only has one bone binding, so in this case, I'm just going to pick the hip and uh, give it a... Uh, We'll give it a slightly bigger gizmo so that we can sort of easily control. So now I can move the hip around, but as you can see, nothing else in the character is uh, being affected by the hip, so it's uh, it's not a very interesting solver at this point in time. Um, so what we need to do is uh, put the humanoid leg solver on, and uh, the humanoid leg solver, once it's applied, will give us um, IK chain behavior on the legs and, and also FK and IK blending. So um, the first thing I'll do is expand out one set of bindings, and uh, uh, we're going to specify two bones for the ch IK chain and an ankle bone. So it's a much more traditional humanoid leg. Now, before I close this down, I'll just show this is the skeletal hierarchy of um, this this character, and uh, I'm just going to pick the leg bone here and the other leg bones, setting up the left leg and uh, selecting um, the left ankle. 
So now we've got one leg um, set up, and you can see there's a, a slight light blue chain. I'm just going to make the, the gizmos um, a bit bigger. So now I've got, um, let's, just, let's just zoom in, let's just zoom in here a bit and, and have a look. We've got a simple IK chain working now. Um, uh, also, there's two little other balls there that aren't being configured very well. That's because they're the pivot controls. So I think uh, pivot forward is, I'll just set it to 14, and the pivot backward is 40, something like this. So what this gives is these two other controls now for controlling um, pivot forward and pivot backwards. As you can see, this this kind of comes, this behavior comes built in as part of um, as part of the solver, making it really easy to get this character set up in this way. So now, um, what I'll do just to finish off the legs is apply the t digit solver. So I'm just drag and drop the digit solver onto. Actually, before I do that, sorry, I'll set up the other leg. Um, so we have one uh, one binding here. Binding zero is setting up the left leg. Um, I haven't named the leg, it's just using the number zero. Um, the system's designed to rig multiple legs using a single solver. So here's the right leg, and in this case we're just going to bind it using um, the bones on the right side of the body. So here's the right thigh, the right calf, and here's the right ankle. Now, one thing to point out is that we could, um, soon we'll have a picking system there. You can actually select the bones in the viewport instead of having to... Uh, selecting them from a no named list. Um, but uh, for now, it's, it's sort of easy enough with small skeletons just to pick them from that tree view. So now we've got the both both the legs set up, and one thing I should probably do is make those gizmos just a little bit smaller. Um, maybe make a size of 10 for that gizmo. Um, now, uh, so it's interesting that these IK solvers now are already really uh, ready to go without too much work. Well. Now we'll stick on this digit solver, and the digit solver is uh, good for configuring either um, fingers or toes. The only difference between fingers and toes is toes uh, have a projection onto the ground, which helps them do collision detection against the ground. So I'm just going to expand out. Um, the, the digits in this case are very simple. So I'm going to have one bone uh, per toe. I'm just going to select the left digit here, and then I'm going to set up another digit. So we can see we've got um, two toes. Uh, one on each side of the foot, and each toe is made up of one bone. So uh, that's the two bones. And now what we have, um, just going to zoom in a little bit, a bit more. Now when we move the feet, we've got the toes are, are playing along. And also if I rotate the feet here, we've got nice um, collision detection against the ground. So this is a behavior that comes built in with the toe solver. Um, and it's, it's doing, automatically doing this for us, which is nice. Um, so that's that's the sort of the lower half of the, the, the body configured now. I'll just um, move up the torso, and what we'll apply now is the spine solver. So just here's the spine solver in this list. I'm just going to drag and drop that onto our character, and then scroll down, and we've got um, spine solver at the bottom. Now, as you can see, all of the solvers are designed to handle binding multiple bones. In the case of the digit solver, if we had, say, 10 toes, five on each side, it would be very easy just to configure all of the 10 toes just using one solver. You don't have to s apply 10 different solvers. And that makes the system more efficient and also easier to manage. So I'm just going to have one spine in this case. We could have multiple spines if you're building kind of crazy characters. But in this case, it's just one. Um, and we'll just expand out the number of bones we, we want to use here. So I'm going to pick the first spine bone, the second spine bone, the third. I think we're going to have two more. So there's a fourth, and then there's a ch there's a chest bone as well. So we've already got the spine bound now, and um, I'm just going to make the gizmos a little bit bigger. See how big we need to make them. So now I've got kind of this behavior for the spine. It's kind of a nice um, kind of Bezier curve based spine. But notice it's actually avoiding doing stretching. Um, it's, it's, it kind of tries to reach the goal, but it's not actually stretching. Now this is a, this is a choice. We could easily build a stretchy spine um, using the same solver system. Um, but in this case, we've just got a, a more of a rigid spine, which is in this case is better for sort of game characters or characters where you don't really want any distortion in, in the character skeleton. There's only one other little detail, and that is I if I move the hip, we've kind of got this rigid torso. 
and there's a parameter here uh, that allows me to configure an independent hip. If I specify this parent space var name, what we have now is an independent hip where I can move the hip independently of um, of the uh, the rest of the body, and this gives us a sort of a, a nice independent hip motion. Um, we still have the overall root control here, which gives us more of that rigid behavior, but we can also move the hip independently. Okay, so that's the torso hip set up. Now we'll just um, configure the arm solvers. I'll just do that by dragging and dropping the arm solver component onto this character. Expanding out these two things, we're gonna have two arms, so I'll just expand them out immediately. Each arm will be made up of two bones. And we'll just go through and, and select the, the bones that make up this arm. Now, these skeletons can be defined in any application. In this case, the skeletons were defined in 3D Studio Max, and they follow the naming convention of the characters defined in 3D Studio Max, but they could easily be defined in Softimage or Maya or any other product. Really, as long as it can be exported to F, uh, FBX, we can get the skeletons in here and rig them using Fabric Engine or Creation Platform. So now I have um, the arm set up. Uh, we have a sort of Unfortunately, um, the, the bone for the palm is extending past the end of the fingers. This is just a, a simple thing that can easily be fixed, but at this point it hasn't been done. I've given myself nice big manipulators, and now I can move this arm. And this is a nice arm. It's got um, sort of RKFK controls. The clavicle is also a part of this solver. You can see it's actually extending whenever the arm solver is kind of out of range of its goal. We also have um, IK controls, FK controls, so I can control this arm in FK, instead of um, just move this arm in FK, but I'm just gonna leave him in IK for now. Um, I think I've got an undo bug there. Um, but the, uh, the arm is now stuck in this position. Anyway, I'm just gonna move that back. So coming down here, um, we've now got that torso arms and configured, and the only thing left is to assign um, another spine solver for the head. So the head, the neck is considered just another spine. We could build a specialized solver just for the neck that may have di different controls. For example, it could provide look at controls for the head, um, but in this case, I'm just using another spine solver. So the spine solver is gonna be controlled uh, controlling the three bones that make up the neck and head. And these bones are right here, neck one, neck two, and uh, and head. Now we've got uh, the, the gizmos there in, in space. So I can now, so just quickly, I can, I can manipulate the head. I've got sort of a very simple head control. Uh, I would actually recommend building a, a custom um, controller for the, for the head, which would give us sort of a nice look at system, but that hasn't been done yet. As something to be done in the future. So now we've got this completely rigged up character and all we did to rig up this character was really specify the solvers and specify the bindings to the bones in that character skeleton. Um, this just shows how easy it is to, to rig up characters using this paradigm and really in a few hours you can rig up a character without even knowing anything more about how the system works. And the, system, the character once it's rigged in this way is, is now ready for animation. Uh, we can now start creating animations and um, and uh, yes, start becoming productive with this character. So it's a really easy system to work with. It's also easy to, once you've defined new custom solvers, you can really easily just apply them to a character without actually having to sort of heavily modify the character's rig. And you can modify a rig after it's been, uh, after animation has already begun on it. So that's it for now. The next video will cover some basics of animation.